So we've been preparing for this consensus upgrade for a while now. We started in February, at the beginning of February is when we had our first kickoff call to start planning for this upgrade. Maybe I'll go a little higher level for those newer to the community who might not know exactly what I mean by a consensus upgrade. This is the second time the EOS network is having a consensus upgrade. The first time was for the 1.8 upgrade back in September 23rd of 2019. So it's been a few years now since we've had a consensus upgrade. And basically what a consensus upgrade is, we're activating new features, brand new features for the EOS network that are not backwards compatible with the old features. So as soon as these features get activated, if you haven't upgraded your node that's running on EOS, so if you're a DAP developer or a block producer or an exchange, a lot of the times you actually need to be running your own node to facilitate the product that you're offering, you need to make sure that before we activate this consensus upgrade, you've updated your nodes so that it's compatible with the new features. And then it's up to the block producers. So the, the way that EOS works is we have the top 21 elected block producers. You get 15 out of 21 of them to agree to make any changes to the network. In this case, agree to activate these new consensus features. Once that's activated, again, that technically a lot of people will refer to this as a hard fork. I prefer referring to it as a consensus upgrade just because a hard fork typically has the connotation of contentious upgrade. In the case of you hear the term hard fork a lot in things like Bitcoin, where Bitcoin forked into Bitcoin Cash, and you ended up with two different networks. In the case of this consensus upgrade, we're we're using, leveraging the, the antelope features, the flexibility of EOS to coordinate among the block producers and come to consensus on this is the path forward for the network. We're all agreeing. 15 out of 21 of us have signed this proposal. And rather than forking into two different networks, we maintain one chain all on the new consensus version. And anyone who hasn't done that upgrade basically just their stuff stops syncing with the network. So again, it's very important that if you do want to make sure your software is still running as expected, if you're an exchange, if you're a DAP developer, if you're a BP, make sure that you get your nodes updated before September 21st. And that's a big part of what these weekly meetings have been all about is getting the community prepared, making sure everyone is aware that this is coming. We heard from Bishop earlier talking about all the work that EOS support has been doing to help us in that effort. It's been awesome having to help in this outreach for the 1.8 upgrade back in, in 2019. EOS support didn't exist. The ENF didn't exist. It was a little bit more hectic, disorganized. We didn't have some of these core pillars within the ecosystem to, that, that we could help promote some of this messaging. So the EOS support, not only are they great for helping spread the word, but also they're a single point of contact when people have questions. People don't have to wonder, where do I go find out? Where do I get help with upgrading my nodes in time for September 21st? We're pointing everyone to EOS support. And if and EOS support is coordinating in the back around getting people in touch with the right contact to answer the questions if they're not able to answer it themselves. And uh, the latest status is we're on track. We're still targeting September 21st. Starting next week, we're going to start doing daily meetings, having daily go no-go calls, make sure that we're all ready. And we'll begin start passing around that multi-sig proposal to block producers starting on. So the team is working right now, testing some new techniques to make sure that the multi-sig doesn't get executed earlier than expected. The way that EOS works is once you have the 15 signatures on a multi-signature, anybody in the network can execute it. So to prevent that from happening before the time we've designated, we're testing some new functionality that will actually be able to allow us to choose the date that it can not get activated before that. And then after that time, anyone will be able to execute it. And like I said, we'll have daily calls. And then on September 21st, we'll live stream that call. We'll, it'll happen a little, an hour earlier than usual. The 1200 UTC with a plan of activating those features on that 1300 UTC on September 21st.